Um, you know, Angelo the other day was on with us, and he's on with us every Monday. And he said that he believes that Nick Sirianni should be fired. And he's going to come on next week and toast some champagne if he is. I'm not thinking that's happening. Let's see what Mike Missinelli, a part of the uh, Big Sills Mafia here. Mike Missinelli joins us here. Mike, I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this, man. Dan Cilio, how are you today? So Angelo said on Monday, or was it two, It was Tuesday, he said that he's going to come on the day that um, Nick Sirianni is fired and drink a toast and have a toast of champagne. Are you in that? Are you are you going to be toasting, or do you believe today that it's going to be status quo and they're moving ahead with Nick? Well, here's the thing: uh, Angelo has been known to do to celebrate the fire. I, I don't celebrate the firing coaches. I just give him my opinion on whether I think they should be fired. And uh, there's no question in my mind that I would never come back with them. You. But after that collapse and, uh, you know, a coach can be judged almost more on that kind of a situation than winning because talented players win. In a situation where your team has disintegrated and you, you end up losing six of seven, you are unable to stem the tide of that dysfunction. And to me, that's not a coach who should be able to come back because nobody could trust them at that point. Um, that was a good team. It wasn't like it was a bad team. It wasn't a four and twelve Doug Peterson team. This was a good team that started off ten and one. They lost their way. This guy's decision was, although I think it was Lori's decision, to change defensive coordinators in the middle of that craziness, lose the locker room with, with AJ Brown. Uh, he was unable to get that team ready to play a football game in the playoffs when you had the weakest opponent in the playoffs. So I don't know what justification. It would take to bring him back and tell your fan base, well, he's a good coach. I know he's been in the playoffs for three straight years. I know they went to the Super Bowl. That window of six to seven games is the most telling thing to me about Nick Sirianni. So what I think is happening now, and it's deja vu all over again for Jeffrey Lurie, this is like the, the slow drip until the bucket is filled. And that's what's going on right now. It's like drip, drip, drip. He took eight days to do this to Peterson when it happened. So what he's doing now is getting ducks in a row. He's trying to do his own research on who the coordinators would be, who who would be great members of the staff. The only there are two reasons why Sirianni might survive. One is Lurie's ego, because three years ago when he hired this guy, he was showing off his brilliance that he found the next new shiny toy. And if he goes back on that, he looks ridiculous. And the other thing is, if Sirianni will now keep the job under Jeffrey's tenants which is, yeah, you can have the job, but here's what we're going to do. I'm picking the staff. This is going to be your defensive coordinator. This is going to be your offensive coordinator. Here's going here's to be your staff. If you want the job under those parameters, we'll give you another year. Peterson told him to F off when he gave him that because Peterson wanted his wanted to keep three members of his offensive staff. So that's what I think is going on. I think he's got two slim chances to survive. But if you're asking me, there is no way you can sell Sirianni to that locker room anymore, which now has to be broken completely down, or your fan base. How about this, Mike? And, and again, I, I think he should be fired too. I want that clear. But here at the other, the other side of this, you you mentioned it. Well, you know, when he first got the job, he didn't hire any of those assistants. He said that when he was at the Super Bowl this last February, that he had to introduce himself to eighty percent of the roster on the coaching staff. So many of those coaches were already in place. And then on top of that, Mike, you said it. So he walks into that meeting this afternoon with, with Jeffrey Lurie, and he goes, you told me to make that move on Sean Desai. you the ones that hired Brian Johnson. And then you hired Matt Patricia. I could turn around if I'm Nick Sirianni and go like this to you, Mike. These were all your decisions. You asked me to do this. Save him? That's and you save him? asked me to do all this, and you're going to fire me because you wanted me to do what you wanted? Yeah, because and then Jeffrey says, yeah, well, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But guess what? I, I'm the owner, and if you if you talk about that and balk at it, guess where you're going to get a job in the NFL? So he's got the hammer both ways, Dan. See, I, I, okay, fair enough, but then that's why I say this. I think he navigates himself through that and goes, okay, you want to hire the coordinators again? No problem. That's on you. See, to me, Mike, he he he's not just going to walk in there and go, 
hey, fuck you, man, like Doug did. He's going to go, okay, you know, what do you guys want to do? I think this guy knows how to watch. He's not a professional coach, Mike. He's a professional angler. He never has been a coach. He knows how to yeah, navigate. He, he would take the job. There's no question. If, if he would let, let Lori pick. He doesn't have any other choice. He's a novice coach. And so, yeah, I mean, that that's the chance he has to keep the job. Because then save, Lori saves face by saying, okay, well, I didn't hire a head coach who was a total buffoon. Because uh, I, three, three years ago, bragged about how brilliant my hire was from Nick Sirianni. So, and he gets to, to pick a staff, like he did with, with uh, Steichen and like he did with Gannon. He did all that research. Who are the hot names? Who are the hot yeah. OC, D, DC names? And that's what he's doing right now. You, it's clear that he's like – on the phone with all his important football people that he thinks he has this rapport, getting all these recommendations, and that's why it's going to take several days for this to transpire. I think Frank, get this, I text Frank Wright, and I think Frank's in the conversation at potentially joining the staff in some capacity as the offensive coordinator. He knows the owner. The owner loves him. He recommended Nick. He recommended Shane. He recommended Gannon. You don't think they're going to lean on that? And plus, Nick respects him. In my opinion, Mike, that's kind of the only thing that maybe saves that locker room is that you bring a guy in that helped you win a Super Bowl right, and was the buffer but, between you know, Doug. At this point, Dan, can you sell Frank Reich? He's Absolutely. Um, in, in he's two a, spots. For being you, a coordinator? Yes. Head coach? No. All right. I, I don't know. I think the shine is off him. I don't think Laurie wants to, to go back in time. I think Laurie okay. is a guy who wants to dazzle people with his research. Because he is a closet meddler. And behind the scenes, he thinks he's the smartest football guy that's there. And he's got all this collection of important people that he consults with. So I don't think it'll be right. I think it'll be the next, whoever the hot names are, that's who he'll go after for coordinators. You don't think, hey, by the way, I put these names out there. And you tell me if this is the MO of them. I put Bobby Slowick, the Texans OC, Frank Smith. Yeah. Dolphins OC, Ben Johnson, Lions OC, Mike McDonald, Ravens DC, Joe Brady up in Buffalo. And everyone's like, wait a minute, what about Vrabel and Belichick? I'm like, name me one coach he's ever hired that's a former NFL head coach that they've put in the building. They never have. They're going to go off this list, right, Mike? It would, Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and see, those names are all good names. Would they come to be a coordinator or would they come to be head coach? Ben Johnson's looking for a head coaching job at this point. He's not going to come here as a coordinator. And you're right. Lori's MO is, is to do that. However, this, this situation is so bad at, at this particular time. Don't you think a, a reversal of thought process would be a, like he was, all right, I tried it my way. Now I got to get order. Would he pivot? To get order, I got to get one of these guys who knows what the hell they're doing. In would, the would he pivot, Mike? That's why I said either status quo or you're going to pivot your course direction. I think he and he has shown with Chip. Chip was the bad hire, though. It wasn't a wrong mentality to change the course direction, but Mike. You shouldn't be afraid if you're going to pivot off of something and maybe redefine roles as well for Howie. See, if he pivots, Mike, in my opinion, that's a true sign that they lost some type of faith in Howie. Because if you bring in Mike Vrabel or you bring in a Pete Carroll or you bring in someone like that, doesn't that diminish the role of Howie a little bit when it comes to game day operation? He would be back in the broom closet like he was when they hired Chip. So, uh I don't know. He's got uh, eminent trust in Howie Roseman. I don't think he would do that at this stage. So, yeah, I think it's very unlikely that those big-name guys will be the head coaches of the Philadelphia Eagles. That, I, you're right. It would take a pivot of thought, which I don't believe, unless he looks at this situation. And it's bad. They, the situation is bad. Look at the personnel that they need right now. I mean, their strength. The defensive line was supposed to be their strength. They're decimated there. The two guys in the middle hit a wall. His ends didn't get any pressure all year long. His linebackers were a joke. He needs two safeties. He's got two cornerbacks that have hit a wall. This whole thing needs to be broken down. Wow. What a massive mess this thing is here. And let me throw this at you now. Mike, do you think that they gave Jalen Hurts the contract too soon? Well, it's the easiest thing to say now. Uh, there was something wrong with him. Now, I you know, the scheme, their offensive scheme was so ridiculous and so poorly coached that it, it, it leads me to say, well, 
okay, Jalen was bad, and he didn't recognize the same things that he recognized the year before. But I got to throw that into the equation also. I'm watching them play teams that are telling you before the game, here's what we're going to do. We're going to blitz your ass. And all week long, they had no preparation for it? Like it's 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 like mind boggling malpractice. Like this isn't this what you're a, a coach for? Okay, he's Wink Martindale going to do this. Surely Todd Bowles in this game. We got second life. We know exactly what he's going to do. Here's what we need to do to counter that. Now I know losing AJ Brown was a kick in the butt, and they didn't have a third receiver that they could count on. But they were ill prepared for what that team told you they were going to do. I, and, and they're the most blitzed team in National Football League, too. You would think after a while that you would have answers. And see, Mike, to me, a head coach is a guy who's a problem solver. He's he, he's a guy that's a pro. Like McDermott, what did McDermott do? Look what he did. Course change. In season, they go and they elevate Joe Brady, and then they knock out Ken. That kid, Allen, has been a different guy. The three-game losing streak with Kyle Shanahan. They had three games where they just looked terrible. They lost to the stupid Browns, and he righted the ship. To me, you have to be a problem solver. You can't consistently, week in and week out, go into a game going, are they really going to blitz us again? Are they really going to blitz us again? How do you not answer that well, when you know, you're the most blitz team in the league? You're, you're, and listen, the offense, uh, Brian Johnson gets all the heat. It's a Sirianni offense. So Brian Johnson's doing exactly what Sirianni wants to do. Absolutely. You talk about a problem solver. That's what I've been talking about. When you lose six or seven games, there's a problem. And, and, and you introduced it with the defensive coordinator. So you now have to ma manage to coach your way through this. He didn't. And that's why he doesn't deserve to, to have the job anymore. He he was powerless to stop that cancer that ripped through them over the last seven games of the year. Mike, what what do you make of Jalen not defending Nick Sirianni? And, and, and I say it like this, whatever you want to say about Dak, you know, after they got crushed by the Packers, you know, someone said, hey, Mike McCarthy's ass is on the hot seat. Dak goes with him. My ass should be on the hot seat too because – you know, it ain't Mike. It's all of us. You know, player accountability. And he went over in like a soliloquy where he went over the line to really defend his guy. And given numerous opportunities, um, some of the guys from the Inquirer gave him numerous opportunities to kind of go out on a limb and go, hey, you know, the Seattle play? Now, Nick jumped down a limb for you. You never defended him. You know, Nick jumped down a limb for you here. You didn't jump out there for him. And, you know, hey, hey you know, Nick's on the hot seat. I didn't know he was going anywhere. I mean, come on, that guy's not dumb. He knows what he's doing there. He's a calculated guy. I mean, what do you make of all that? It's telling. But then again, you know, I go, uh, okay, in reality, their offense is trying to protect him because they couldn't, they, they didn't want to use the RPO, which he excelled in because they were afraid of him getting hurt or protecting him with his knee or whatever. But at that point, there's got to be a way to coach him and say, okay, here's what we need to do with you right now. We need you to get the ball out of your hands quick. So these are the plays we're going to use to do that. The fact that they didn't do that, and, and, I, and I don't know what's in his head, whether he wanted to play the old way and he felt that they took it away from him because, you know, that RPO is perfect for him and I know he wants to do it. But the, I think that they had him in mind by going away from the RPO to preserve him. He maybe should have had some loyalty to that, but then there should have been a conversation. Okay, well, if you don't want me to play that way anymore, let's see what we can do uh, instead. And every week, their offense from that that at the twelfth thing after the twelfth game of the year, every week their offense had. How many times did they use a, a bubble screen to a tight end, or a bubble screen where you got 180 pound Devontae Smith blocking for? For somebody, it's it's absolutely Stupid. ridiculous. We watched it twenty times, not work. Now you would think that these offensive coaches who are supposed to be football experts and pedigree in football could figure that part of it out. We can't use that play. Let's use the middle of the field. We used to use the middle of the field with quick slants to AJ Brown. Why don't we do that? Why don't we get Goddard more targets? They they reduced Goddard when he came back to the injury. They reduced them to nothing, and they kept taking shots down the field. And I'm going. What are they? What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Like I, I okay, I don't have like a PhD in football tattooed on my forehead, but I can see this. Absolutely. My couple last questions for you here. Um, do you think Howie Roseman's a good general manager? I, I always not going overboard with Howie Roseman, uh, and uh, you know now let's let's look at it. 
he you know, he hasn't stockpiled any players or his coaches ha- haven't developed the young players that he has drafted. Now, at, at the end of the year, they throw in the Eli Rickses and the Keely Ringos and, and this and that. He didn't draft. Like, what did he do at linebacker? He watched a guy walk away for $6 million. Now, what, what does he have at running back? DeAndre Swift's not coming back. No Kenneth way. Gainwell is, is nobody. They signed Rashad Penny, and for what reason? To pay him a salary? And Boston Scott, that's what they have. They have to replenish there. They have to replenish at another receiver because they didn't develop Quez Watkins. They've had four years to develop Quez Watkins. They couldn't develop him. They don't develop young players. So either he's drafting wrong because the coaches look at these players he's drafting and they go, I can't, I can't play. Or, or, or the coaches are wrong. And, and that they can't teach young guys and develop them. I don't know what it is, but he certainly at this particular point. Now, when they were 10 and 1, he was the king of the city. Oh, my God. Look at this team, how he's putting together. But then it just dismantled, and we see w- really what it is. They need 20 players. Oh, yeah. They need, I mean, Dan, if you think about it, you, they need an entire new linebacking core. I mean, and, and the decision that they made to – um to put their faith in a guy who was coming out of college with um, a reputation of not being able to stay healthy, who had only played 34 plays playing the Mike linebacker, which was an asinine thing to do. And you have, then you have your cornerbacks. I don't know, Mike, if I look back at the Bradbury deal, he came in for an all pro season, man. I mean, I don't know. In hindsight, you look at it today and you go poor. Okay. I get it. But still, the defense that you played, you got less pressure. The volume of pressure didn't get home. And you had two center field cornerbacks because you played that style of defense. I mean, the style of defense exposed them more than anything else. I personally think they were the same guys from a year ago. But what's the difference, Mike? 70 sacks and a higher volume of getting home. This year, that didn't happen. What happened? No, they more didn't get got developed down You're the right. field. Those guys got exposed. They're not man cover guys. And they're kind of who they were. A year ago, except that the front seven well, was I don't great know. last I, I, year. I don't know about Bradbury being the same. I, you know, he's like a he running back. He looked wasted. He he hit a wall physically. I, I I don't know, you know what what happened with that guy. And I it's and I guess million. you're right. At the time, I guess you had to sign him. But um, you know, this is like the rule of thirty that Joe Banner used to have in here. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, you played well at age twenty nine. You're going to be thirty. That changes my perspective on it now. He used to take a lot of crap for that, but the rule of 30 usually works out more than it doesn't. So, you know, he's got two 30 year old cornerbacks that they, they, they believed in. And they let another guy go who had some attitude and they let a linebacker go who was asking for 6 million. This is a tough one here for you. Do you bring Brandon Graham back? No, I I'm see, I'm not a sentimental guy. So neither am I. You know, I, 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 the fact that he wants to come back and play one more year. I, I'm not ball. a celebration tour guy. I know. And the fact that he said that, I, I was kind of put off by because he's bigger than that to do, to do that. So now, like, now he's got the fans that want to side saying, well, you, yeah, you owe him that one year. I, I don't owe anybody, anybody, uh, anything who can't play anymore. And that's unfortunate, but that's what the NFL is. And, and there's no way you can waste money on that. Like, what what would they give Brandon Graham to come back for one year? Would they give him ten million? No, no, Mike. I don't want. I know the roster seat and the roster spot is more important than a celebration tour. I agree. I agree, and it, that's what I'm saying. Like ten million is ten million. You don't have to spend. I could pay two million in a rookie or nine hundred thousand dollars in a rookie. Get the same shit that I got from you yeah. last year. No, hey. I, I got to move on from the Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham uh, situation. You got two more years with Lane Johnson. You're going to have to move Jurgens to center and have a new right guard, which is a dynamic that they have to now explore. Uh, the the Mylotta is, you know, starting to show some leaks. Like the, the strengths of their two lines, which they bragged about all the time, are now fragmented. So what do they have? Like, what's the base of the Philadelphia Eagles right now? Final question for you. I mean, this is all going to come down to the one guy in the building and one man only, the guy that had the puss on at Raymond James, and that was the owner. So, Mike, how do you look at him in this whole process? Do you think he makes, again, analytics department, his son's in there now. Um, how, How do you look at him making these decisions going forward? I mean, 
This has he to be He believes in him himself. Too. He believes in himself. I saw the face. He was totally embarrassed. The worst thing you can do to Jeffrey Lurie is be embarrassed. And he was embarrassed. Is that so the most you've ever seen him embarrassed? I'm sorry? Is that the most you've ever seen him embarrassed like that? Yeah, before? I've never seen a look like that. That was that was total embarrassment. And I, I you know, I felt it too. I mean, all fans felt it. If I owned a team, I I I would I wouldn't even have put myself in that position to be shown on television. I would have got out of there. But uh he he uh, when he is embarrassed like that, he usually will uh that's why I don't think Sirianni's coming back. I, I don't think he can sell that now that he's coming back, but he's gonna do the same thing. It's not gonna change unless unless he's gotten religion and say, you know what. I messed this up. I messed this up. I believe in Sirianni. Now I got to go to uh, somebody who can kick the ass to the, in this organization. I mean, a variable. I'm just using that like a, a variable type. I have to go away from me finding the the novice guy that makes me smarter than everybody else. That's he would have to find that kind of religion. I don't think he's going to find it. And I think right now it's just like I said, that slow drip until the bucket fills up, and then next week uh, he'll announce that uh, uh, Sirianni is back. Uh, but uh, and, he'll, and he'll do it publicly, but it'll be my choice for all the coordinators and the coaching staff. So, again, that was going to be my last question. You think this is would do you think that's a quick decision because he's taking eight days and that's his MO? Yeah, and that's, he's going to do that. He's trying to find out who he can get, and if he can get the next shiny new toy as a head coach, he'll get that. But if he can get the two shiny new toys to be a coordinator. He'll let Sirianni survive, which takes the heat off of him. Oh, so you think got he's working year. dual track here? Yeah. You so he's working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Figuring out to keep him, but he's also in the same process, reaching out to people, going, "Is this guy the right fit?" Yes. And then he's I'm, going to come to a decision and go, "What's in the best interest of our team going forward?" That's what I believe is going to happen. Yep. Wow. Mike, tell folks, I know you do a podcast too. By the way, folks, the post-game show was fantastic this year. Mike did such a sensational job. Um, one of the true legends in the – I'm privileged to have both him and Angel come on the program. I love both these guys so much and their work. You know, when I first got into business, these two guys were part of the whole thing there, and you did such a great job in our post-game show. I know you also do a podcast. Please tell folks how – Yes, uh, the podcast is uh, sponsored by Bet Rivers. You can just uh, check out the Mike Missinelli podcast wherever you get your podcast. And it's basically the same me without uh, phone calls. <laughs> you know, the people that listen to me all these years, you know, I don't hold back an opinion. I don't, I don't curry favor with anybody. I give you what I, I feel is the right thing that the fan should hear. And that gets me in trouble sometimes. It gets me in trouble. It's just like what you do. You know? <laughs> right? I'm more dying breed. We say Angelo says the same thing. I go, Angelo, you're not on WIP because well, no, you are not on WIP because of the money, just by the recent hire. Of course, they're gonna go down with uh they're gonna pay guys with Skittles nowadays. Uh yeah, I mean they hire a guy at WIP and they gave him like food cards to do the show now. So <laughs> hey, no, 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 guys like Mike and Angelo and all those guys have great opinions and they don't work for um Per diem you know, Dan, I'm glad you brought that up because the industry has changed so much. Sports Talk Radio has changed so much. When we grew up, newspapers were an authority and newspapers, lay, like columnists would lay you out. And so, like, that's what our background was. So we went on Sports Talk Radio. We were willing to lay you out and give you the truth. The industry has changed now. Now you have to be either a fanboy, you have to be a bro boy, or, or you know, you, or, 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 or you have to, like, curry favor and kiss ass because there's so many other outlets that, that you can get the information because then teams will ban you. It's a shame, hey, Mike, but the golden gonna, era of Sports Talk Radio is over. Mike, Molly, completely. Mike, check this out. And I'm not going to name the name, but there was a guy on WIP, and he was in the mornings, and he was talking to Sirianni, and he goes, Nick, how is all of this affecting you personally? And I went like this. Well, I'll tell you one thing's for sure. Me in my day, that's not a question that would ever cross my mind. I want to know what you're going to do to win a football game. I don't give a shit how you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, no, I, mean, I, I thought think, you guys I, had. I, tough, I thought you guys had tough sports talk, guys. I, you're, I, you're acting like a psychologist on the man, air. I, I I totally agree with you. As if like uh, like he was going to cook you dinner. Uh, and, and, and like I was worried about his mental state because he was going to mess up my steak or something. I get it. 
No, that's not a question I would ask either. How I, here's what I would ask. How, how on earth do you allow your team in the huddle to go rogue and design a play in the, in the freaking sand when you need six yards for a first down? That's the question I would ask. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's why that guy's a legend. Mike, thank you so much, my good friend. All right, Danny. I'll talk to you. Bye you got bye. it. Mike Missinelli. Absolutely love talking to Mike. Great stuff there. We really appreciate him coming aboard. Hey, Tone, have I taken a break yet? Have, 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 have I, I, that can't be. Hey, wait a minute. I, I haven't taken, that, my God almighty. Now, see, look, when you get an Italian rolled up in here, by the way, Tone's Italian too, as far as you know. Just so you know, Tone's Italian. I get it. I'm not going to say what you said. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that here. Hold on here. What does he say? Oh, I'm a machine. I love machine. I can't believe I didn't take a break here, man. Holy cow. What a fat talking guinea. I can't believe it, man. I'm just barking my ass off over here. Hey, our good friends at Hooters right now. Don't forget. Calendars are out. 2024. No question. Hey, by the way, Tone, I want you to do me a favor before um, when we come back in the top of the hour, if you could come on again for just a couple minutes, I didn't do the defense. And I want to do the defensive side on giving the player exit grades. And then we'll bow out of that. If I could get you for just a couple more minutes there, we'll do something on that as well. We'll do that at the top of the hour. Don't forget, hey, in the calendars, man, there's like $100 in coupons that are in there. Also, football this weekend with the divisional rounds on Saturday and Sunday going to be great. In-game, $2 off every pitcher. A dollar goes to a local charity for proceeds. Don't forget, northeasttutors.com, northeasttutors.com. Hey, Wing Wednesdays, man, absolutely spectacular. 1983, that's the year the place was founded. All you can eat, kids eat for free on Saturday. Northeasttutors.com, that's northeasttutors.com. And when you do me a favor, you roll in, tell them Big Sill sent you. Hooters, the perfect pair.